Well, it's that time of year again. Some of the biggest updates for Adobe Zaps have just been released, including those for Lightroom Classic. I'm Austin James Jackson, professional landscape photographer based in Utah. And in today's video, I'm gonna be walking you through all of the new features that we have in Lightroom Classic with some examples and some explanations as well. I like to keep things quick and straightforward, so let's jump right on into Lightroom and look at all of the new features to Lightroom Classic. Now, first things first, we've got some improvements to the generative AI, to specifically to the object detection. I'll show you how that works. What you're gonna do here in Lightroom Classic, make sure you're in the develop module, you're going to click on the little eraser button here, and then you're gonna make sure use generative AI and detect objects is on. Now we can go in there, we can adjust the size of our brush, which you can do with the opening and closing brackets as well and you'll just paint over the object. Now where this object uh, or detect objects comes in is if I don't wanna paint this full horse, this is kind of a small horse, so there's really no reason why I couldn't. Um, but if I do something like that, you can see how it selects inside, it detects the object of that horse. Um, now I could go in and you wanna subtract and you, know, you don't need all this extra space, you want a little bit of extra space around your object, but we will just go in and get rid of some of the extra. And you wanna make sure you add the shadow here when you use this um, and give us a little extra buffer on the side. And you can hit remove. Now that's gonna take just a second here. I'm showing you in real time. You can see it removes your horse just like that. Now this generative AI was in the early access or beta mode. It is no longer uh, in that mode anymore now. It's like a permanent feature, I guess. You can see it does a pretty nice job. Totally gets rid of that horse for me. So that is how it generative AI works. And that is how the object selection works. Again, if you just draw around the edge of your subject, it will hopefully select the interior, the inside of your subject, whatever that may be, whether it's a person, a horse, an animal, anything else, a cloud, you know, whatever it is, should select it all. Now the next thing on the list is improvements to HDR images. You can now view HDR images in the secondary window, which is just kind of a quality of life improvement if you use HDR imagery. Now one thing that has certainly been a very hot topic over the last few years is the rise of AI and how we can validate AI images. We've got a lot of cameras now that are starting to come out with what's called content credentials, which essentially uh, stamps your image with the details of the shot to basically prove that this is a real photograph and not AI generated. Now we've got it in Lightroom and I think you're gonna start to see this on most of the major editors coming out uh, in the next couple years. I'll show you how it works here. So let's say we're done editing this image and this image is even a great example because I actually edited it in Photoshop, saved it back into Lightroom. So there's really no edits here um, and it's a .psb file, but it's still gonna work nonetheless. You're gonna go up to export and we're gonna export this as a JPEG. Um, you can really adjust these settings as you want, but the important thing is the content credentials, which you can see are in early access. Now by default, you're gonna have don't include, but you can uh, select from here which option you'd like. I'm gonna to attach to the file. And when I'm attaching the content credentials, I'm gonna include the producer, which is me, and the edits and activity. Now I can hit export and I've already exported that to my desktop. Then you're able to go to this website, contentcredentials.org slash verify. You can drag and drop your image and then it takes a couple minutes, which I've already done through with this image uploaded it here. Now you can see the details that are included here. So it has the app or device that I use to put the content credentials on and it has the action. So it knows that I adjusted properties like tone, saturation, curves, shadows, or highlights. Um, and then it shows what the original file is from. Um, and now you might be wondering how is this helpful? So if you have like say a photo contest that you enter, they're gonna uh, validate that you essentially submit the image with the content credentials, which will then tell them if you used AI to uh, alter your image. And I'll show you guys, cause I know you're probably wondering exactly what does it look like if you did use AI? Now I exported an additional image here. Essentially what I did, uh, I went in here on Lightroom and I just used the uh, generative AI to remove this whole moose. Now I use the same exact export settings. Um, so all of the details should be here. Now you can see um, first thing when I click here, it says content summary. This image combines multiple pieces of content. At least one was generated with an AI tool which is presumably because I use the generative AI fill there. So it does note when you use that. Now this is going to alert someone if you use generative AI to spot heal your image. So for that reason, I would recommend avoiding that generative AI just because you'd hate to use it for something where you don't really need it. Like say you're uh, fixing some dust spots, you don't really need to use generative AI for that. If you 
do, then this is going to detect that with those contract credentials. So if you submit it for like a photo contest or somewhere where it's very important that you're not using AI, um, this is going to flag the image and then you are maybe going to be disqualified. So for that reason, don't use a generative AI. Uh, if you are ever planning on submitting something where contract credentials would be important, and that could really be any point in time, submitting for a magazine, a contest, anything like that. Okay, next thing on the list is enhanced tether support for Nikon cameras. Uh, not much to show for that one, but if you do shoot with an Nikon camera and you do like the tether with Lightroom Classic, uh, it, it has been improved. And the next thing that's been improved is that supposedly you can now uh, tab through images quicker in the develop module. You can see I'm in the develop module here. I've just got a few images in my film strip. It's just as fast as it was before. However, I shoot uh, or I use rather a very fast computer. Um, it's new and it's fully loaded. If you use a slower computer, you'll have to let me know down below in the comments if it is actually faster um, because to me it just looks the same, but I've never had a speed issue to begin with. The next two new features have to do with the catalog. First things first, let's talk about previews. Um, so if you didn't know what Lightroom does to enhance the speed at which you can render an image, like when I zoom in, you can see I can look at that moose. It's not reading this full 60.2 megapixel file. Rather, it's reading um, a preview. It's rendering a preview. So when you import, you have the option to render a preview, and you can also do it after you import as well. Most people, by default, generate that preview when they import their images. Now, there's a little bit better management of those files now. You can go to Lightroom Classic Catalog Settings. Um, and I think on a PC, this would just be like the Edit menu. And you're going to select Previews here. Now you can see previews, it has options up here, um, which have always been there. Now you have options for the preview storage management. I have it to automatically discard one-to-one -one previews after one week. I actually want to change that to after 30 days. Or rather, if you wanted, you could limit the preview cache size to so that rather than discarding them after a certain amount of days, it discards them once it reaches a certain size. Um, and this is a great thing to do because it can help you to free up some space on your hard drive. And you don't need these previews forever. So it's nice to have, you know, you can decide how large you want that to be um, and just play around with that. There will probably be lots of videos online with people talking about what they'd recommend using, but I think it totally depends on how large your images are. Now, if you've been a Lightroom user for long, uh, you probably know that every fall when these big updates come out, you have to upgrade your catalog um, and this changes the name. So a lot of you guys will have, you know, Joe's catalog V12, Joe's catalog V13, Joe's catalog V14, and you have all these catalogs that have keep kept getting upgraded every year. Now there's a better way to do it now. First and foremost, Lightroom just overwrites the old name, so it overwrites the old catalog. Uh, so you won't have to worry about this moving forwards, but you also have the option Option now within Lightroom to actually rename the catalog. You can see under file, you just go to rename catalog and you can name this whatever you want and click rename. That'll instantly rename your catalog. So it's just a nice quality of life upgrade that they added here to rename your catalog. Next upgrade here is to the denoise feature. Uh, so if you've been using Lightroom for very long and you try and upload an image or rather you're just editing an image, you try and use that denoise feature, you'll probably notice on a lot of images it will say denoise is not available for this file type. They've added a bunch of new file types to denoise your photos. I'll put them up here so you can look at them. Unfortunately, a few things that didn't make the list are a few of the things that I would really like to see, which is TIFF files, JPEG files, um, because a lot of times, you know, if I'm saving an image or I'm merging images in Photoshop and saving back, I have a TIFF file, and then it won't allow me to use that denoise feature back in Lightroom on that TIFF file. I don't know why that's the case. Um, someone might say it's not possible, but I know it is because I can use those kinds of files and other denoising programs, you know, Topaz, DxO, all those things. I don't know why it still hasn't been added, but hopefully in the future we'll get support for TIFF and JPEG files because I know those are two files that a lot of you guys might be working with in addition to, of course, your raw files as well. The last new feature is that there's some new adaptive presets to use. I'll be honest, I'm not a huge preset guy, but for those of you guys that are here in Lightroom Classic and you want to crank out great edits faster, these presets are really helpful. Let me show you how they work. I'll start off on this portrait first. It's not the best portrait and I cropped the heck out of it just to show you guys the details. Essentially, you go up to presets here and you get adaptive portrait. Now, by the way, if you don't see adaptive portrait sky and subject, click this plus button and click on manage presets. I hide all my presets because I don't use them, but I just untoggled the ones where there's some new presets to show you. Now, um, you're going to go to portrait and you have some options here. What this does essentially is it's like a preset, but it's using Lightroom's masking feature to do something specific. So, for example, if I selected something like texture hair, you can see what it does is when I go into masking here, 
it has selected our hair and it's just increased the texture of it. Now you can do a lot of different things like smooth the facial skin. Um, you could whiten teeth, darken eyebrows. You can kind of just click through and you can see how quickly I can apply these edits. It's a really nice way to really quickly edit your photos. Let's look at some other options. We'll go to a landscape image here, kind of up my alley a little bit more. And for this one, we're going to use adaptive sky because why not? You can see we can t hover over these and it will kind of give us like a preview of what it's going to do. And of course, you can adjust these as you see fit on this one. I think this blue drama looked really nice. So you can see what it's done here is it's selected the sky and this preset has automatically cooled it down um, and it's added some clarity and dehaze and you can see before and after. So it, it looks actually really nice for just one click. Um, this is just a really fast way to edit your images. And you can, of course, add on more effects here to add things together if you wanted. Now I will go back to our original photo here um, and I want to bring our white horse back to show you this one. Um, and we're going to go to adaptive subject. Now this one is going to think that our horses are the subject, which is great. So what we can do is, you know, you can do basically anything, but let's just say pop. So we'll select pop. Let's go to the masking and see what it's done. It's just kind of it selected those horses. It knows that that's my subject and it's just made them pop a little bit. You can balance the contrast. You can cool them down. You know, you can do a lot of different things here with these adaptive presets. It's a really nice way to quickly edit your images. This isn't a tutorial on how to use them though, but I just wanted to show you that there was a few new ones in there that are really nice to use. All right, hopefully that was helpful for you guys. Um, lots of new cool stuff in Lightroom for the upcoming year. We'll look forward to their spring update as well. Um, and if you guys have any questions or comments, let me know down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. And of course, if you are a photographer, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I'm creating videos every single week, ultimately to help you guys become better photographers with tips, tricks in the field, all that good stuff. Hopefully this video was helpful. Again, my name is Austin James Jackson. Appreciate you guys being here. We'll see you next time.